Okay, um, I'm just going to start this from scratch. Uh, on about scaling, there's there's multiple ways you can do it. If all you're wanting is a box, this is probably the easiest way. So you take your box and you want all of your boxes to be 20 of them, all of which should fit in the other one. That is actually the easiest way to do that is you add an empty. Like that. And we'll just make it X ray so we can always see it. Then in the box, you simply add an array, turn off the relative offset, make your object offset the empty, give yourself 20 items, then drag that empty to the sort of distance you want so you can separate them nicely. So we will say 1.25 say. Oh, hang on. There we go, sorry, that's still two meters tall. So one, one. Oh, this is interesting. One. Not minus one, one. Oh, let me turn the array off. I wonder if that's causing the issue. One. Now let's apply the scale before we do anything. Now turn it back on. Aha. Now let's set the empty to 1.25. They are, so they're all separate. Now you want them to be, let's say, 0.8 the size of each other. So scale the empty by 0.8. So whatever your scale of that empty is, is the scale of your objects. So you can say take that up to 9.3. And there are all your objects. And just to make them real, all you do is apply that modifier. Go into the object and separate by loose parts. And there you are now, you have 20 cubes. Make sure they're all still selected. Shift S, origin to geometry. Now you can delete your empty. And there you've got your 20 cubes, all which fit within each other. So that, that's a fast way of doing that. So that's just for scaling several cubes. <coughs> Excuse me. Never forget using the array with a, an object controller is really handy. Now if it's a bit more complex than that, and you want it to be a specific size again if it's a cube it's easy you know then you just set that size in here so you like say 1.25 1.25 1.25 and apply your scale and that's set solidly if you want it to be a percentage of that size then you just do it. Now if it's an awkward size, let's say boom, boom, boom. let's see. Oh what have we got? Oh Q two, I don't know what that is. Okay, so this is a room layout which is currently those sizes. And you want it to be a set size. There's a couple of ways you can go about it. So we take an orthographic view that overall it's 10.95 meters long. Say you actually only want it to be 9 meters long. An easy way is to add a plane and make that 9 meters on the Y. And we'll make it X ray and wireframe only. And then what you can do is you can scale that, you move that, you can make it bigger on the X because you know it's a, so we encounter it. So like that, and just scale. And then as it gets close, hold the shift key to roughly line it up.
and that's going to get you close again to nine meters long so again hold the shift key and you can get that almost perfect and in that instance it, it again if it has to be exactly nine meters long then the easiest way to tackle that is to push it out some so let's say if we scale that up a bit so it's that size I'll just set me scale and we want 9 meters as a reflection of that so a little bit of get the calculator out so you want 9 divided by 15.648 and that's 0.575 so what we do is and it doesn't matter if you leave the M in so times 0.575 that one times 0.575 that times 0.575 you can see that's very that's as near as damn it 9 so if you undo that so let's try it times 0.5749 that's closer still so time times point five seven four nine times point five seven four nine and that gives you that and again apply your scale and there you've got an object of that specific size now if it's something like a wall and you're actually doing something like building a floor plan then scale this down until it's so we'll call that 15.15 by 0.15 and apply that and let's say we're going to have walls which are 15 centimeters wide I'll go into object mode and the first thing I'll do with my snapping on vertex closest I don't have it actually turned on I use the control so I'll drag control to snap to there then GX3 that gives me a, a 3 meter wall then EX.15 extrudes it by 0.15 now I want to build that one so I will EY 2.75 again EY 0.15 take that one EX minus 0.15 because we're going negative X axis and I'll take the manipulator off because it gets in the way now it's EY minus 3 in E X minus three. And then if you think you overshoot, you can either G X and snap to the vertex, then E X and snap to the vertex. And then you can just hit F to fill that one. And control R again G Y now I want the door to be a meter away so I'll do GY minus 1 there we are and again to do a similar thing there I'll do that I'll GY hold control snap it to the GY minus 1.2 and that could be my doorway and I can then just delete that face and there's a doorway so that's an easy way and I can check all those values by just turning on edge length and select everything and with them turned on as well you then if you do want to make changes so like if you do want to check the length of this doorway you just select those do and hit F so 
So you can see that is indeed 1.2 long. So you can either then delete that edge or you can use it as part of building a, a, a floor. So. There's your floor. And then if I want the walls to be two meters high, I can do E Z twice, so make sure that the axis is showing, and do two point eight. And that's the full height of the room. Now if you want to sort of put your doorway in there, you can do a control R again. GZ, snap to the. You want your doors to be at the 2.1 meter mark. You can go GZ 2.1, and then I can select those two. Bridge edge loops. And there you can see that everything's done. So the various ways of doing your sizing. Um, another thing you can do, let's say you've got a, a torus and you actually want the diameter be, be, uh, of this to be a certain size with the shrink and scale. Say you want it to be an exact size the way I'd do that. I'd pick an edge loop, duplicate it, separate it on the selection select that, snap the origin to the geometry and when we look at the moment that's 50 centimeters so let's say I want that to be 33 0 0.33 0 0.33 don't really need to worry about the scale because it's a standing object so select everything then Alt S Zoom in a bit. Alt S, holding the shift. And you can see it's pretty close to 33. Now I can just delete that object. So there are just various ways you can control the, uh, the scale of something and, and try and get absolute dimensions. As I say, if it's a square or if it's a, an oblong, you know, like say you're building a room and you decide you want your room to be 2.8 meters tall you want it to be 4.2 meters wide and 4 meters long and 3.75 meters long just apply your scale again for things like bevels and that and there's your, your object, it's that quick and that way, like I say, if you decide to expand that to a set size, scale, and then when you get close to your size you want, hold shift and just get it up to where you want it. So if we say that's around 5.25 meters on the X, and again just apply your scale. And that's all there is to it, really. If that's what you want, or if you have any other questions, just let me know.